I've never been known to make content about Top Thrill Jackster. Okay, I may have covered this topic to death, but I'm bringing it back one more time. Every time I post Dragster updates, people in the comments ask me to make my predictions, so I'm finally taking time to sit down and actually throw my hat in the ring for the future of this iconic ride. I'm going to be breaking this down into the least and most likely of what I think is going to happen, so let's hop into it. Starting off with something that I can confidently say has zero chance of happening, I'd like to explain why I fully believe Dragster will not be torn down or scrapped and have the top hat as a memorial to this ride. Speaking of memorials to Dragster, I'd like to take 3 seconds to thank the sponsor of this video, me. If you haven't seen, I sell ripped Dragster shirts along with other products at walkonwearables.com. Anyway, I've seen a lot of people saying that Dragster will be ripped down and have used the fact that some track has already been removed as one of their cornerstone pieces of evidence. Putting aside the fact that we know where the removed pieces of Dragster were sent off to, link in the description if you haven't seen that yet, the timeline for Dragster's removal just doesn't line up to me. Why would the park bring a crane in, remove some track during the operating season, stop the process for 3 weeks, and then continue to tear track out? They would not do that, and logically it just doesn't make sense, also it would be a financial nightmare. Oh, not to mention that Power Tower livestream camera has been pointed at Dragster all day when I was writing this script and no new demolition has been happening. I give a total decommissioning of this ride a 0% chance. Stepping into reality, I suppose the possibility of an extended layout exists. I've seen a bit of ideas for how this is going to happen, so here's a few. Spike theory, extra track theory, and the airtime hill slash inversion theory. The spike theory claims that a swing launch and possible switch track will be added to begin the new ride experience. The current believed position for this spike is right here, also known as the current location of the photo station for Dragster. Allegedly, and take this with a grain of salt as I've not seen the permit myself, the photo station has had demolition permits filed, which means that it will be torn down this offseason. Spike believers think that this confirms the building of a Pantheon-esque spike. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's footage of Pantheon's spike and swing launch. This is the basic idea, but instead of a small Pantheon top hat, it would obviously lead into the iconic Dragster top hat. I personally give this a 25% chance of happening. On to another theory regarding layout. The extra track theory is kind of what it sounds like. This theory is simply put as the layout will be extending using new track from whatever company will be working on it. I have seen it proposed that the new layout will extend over near Corkscrew. I give this a 1% chance of happening, and that is me being generous to be honest. Airtime Hill slash Inversion Theory on the other hand seems a little more likely to me. This simply means that much like King Ka, Dragster will get an additional element in line after the 420 foot drop. If you ask me, I cannot see this being an inversion due to the insane G's that would be pulled, but an Airtime Hill gets a solid 15% chance for me. I'd like to take one moment before I move on to point out that I give a 100% chance to Dragster getting an LSM launch system. I'm going to throw a random 4% out there. This serves two reasons. Firstly, it acknowledges a theory that I have seen floating around, and secondly, it makes my math even. Sue me. Anyway, I give a 4% chance to a drop tower being added inside the top hat just like King Nikah. Why do I not find this very realistic? Well, three main reasons. Firstly, this would not be cheap. Secondly, a tower was put in Ka with the express intent of it being the tallest drop tower in the world, and with Dragster having a tower shorter, it simply couldn't break that. Lastly, Power Tower is literally right across the same midway. Okay, I'm glad I got that out of the way. Let's move on to the big boys. First up, theming. I'm personally of the belief that Dragster will no longer be called Dragster after this closure. The name Topstool Dragster is and will always be associated with the accident unfortunately, but the easiest way to overcome that is to simply change the name. We already have early evidence of this when we saw the nameplate removed from the sign, but the sign itself still stand. This highly implies that the name change is coming. Obviously, if the ride is no longer called Top Thrill Dragster, the overall theme of the ride will very likely be changed from racing. Personally, I've been a fan of a rocket launch or a general space theme for quite a few months, so I'm going to lock in a 45% chance of a re-theme and throw my hat in the ring for space theming. Josh from editing here. Before I get into this next section, I need to acknowledge the new rumors that have come out regarding Zamperla redoing Dragster. If this rumor is true, we will 100% be getting new trains, just like the new coaster being added to PNE Playland in 2024, which is really an old Intamin hydraulic launch coaster revitalized and rebranded with their new lightning trains, will be show off at IAPA this year. I will have some video of that on the channel by the way. Keep in mind that this next paragraph was written before the Zamperlo rumor went big, but I still stand by the points I made. Okay, back to the video. Let's talk trains. The real question that comes into play is will the reimagined ride experience include the old trains or new trains? I've heard it said that each train for Dragster cost Cedar Point $250,000 back in the day, so obviously they would be interested in getting all of the possible use out of them that they can. Personally, I think that the chances of keeping the original trains lies around the 5% mark. Why is that? One simple thing. 
Assuming they're going from a hydraulic launch to an LSM one, the cost of retrofitting the trains has to be taken into account. Why retrofit trains that might need to be replaced soon anyway when you can invest in brand new trains that will last upwards of 30 to 40 years if treated properly? This seems like a no-brainer to me. New trains also account for the gutting of the station. They would have to remove all of the Q rails and air gates to relocate them to line up with whatever trains come in next, so it just makes sense that they would have done that already. If I've done my math right, I have 5% left here, and I'll be allocating that to theories I call the under 1%ers. Basically, I'm going to throw out a bunch and clump them all together into one group that collectively adds up to 5%. Here they go in a rapid fire fashion. Building the top hat higher, digging a trench to make the drop taller, moving the queue into the midway, adding a restaurant on the land somewhere, adding a lift hill, increasing the launch speed, adding a booster right before the crest to cause an insane amount of airtime on the drop, and finally adding spinning cars. Obviously some of these are silly, but I have seen some people consider them as a potential reality, so I felt the need to include them, but not weigh them heavily. I think including them all in 5% is a great way to do this. Whatever happens to this beloved attraction, I cannot wait for official news. I personally think January 9th will be the day of the next announcement regarding this ride's fate for two reasons. Winter chillout is shortly after this, so that we basically need a statement or leaks will happen. That specific day also marks the 20 years to the day of Dragster's initial announcement in 2003. Maybe I'm wrong and we'll hear something about it at IAPA next week, who knows. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments and on Twitter. I'm Josh from Station Wait. have a great day.